In this episode, we are going to compute the density of the metal osmium. Osmium belongs to the hexagonal close packed structure. To see paper models of this particular structure, I refer you to uh, my episodes, symmetry episode 114, part 2, to see the hexagonal primitive structure, and then symmetry episode 115, part 3, to see hexagonal close pack. The unit cell for the hexagonal close pack structure is actually rhombohedral, and we are using the same technique that we have used before to determine the density of a metal by focusing on a single unit cell, calculating the mass of the unit cell, calculating the volume of the unit cell, and then using those two data to compute the density of the metal. The geometry of the hexagonal closed packed structure is a little more complicated than for any of the cubic structures. So for the first part of this video, we are going to look at the geometry. So in the hexagonal closed pack structure, there are two lattice parameters. One is this parameter A, which is the edge length for a rhombus, and C is the height. So we'll notice that we can treat this as if it were a prism, and we're going to compute the area of the base, which is a rhombus, and multiply it by the height to get the overall volume of the unit cell. We can also think of this rhombus as being two equilateral triangles that have been merged together. So we're going to use that fact to compute the area of the rhombus. So if we look at each individual equilateral triangle itself, we notice that the edge lengths are A. Therefore, the base is going to be A. So to compute the height, we're going to use the fact that the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. So we need to figure out what the height of this particular triangle is going to be. So we can draw a perpendicular bisector. And the effect of this bisector is to divide the base into two parts, each of which has length A over 2. Then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to compute what the height of the triangle is going to be. So as we recall, using the Pythagorean theorem, h squared plus a over 2 squared is going to be equal to a squared. We can simplify this a little further. We get that h squared plus a squared over 4 is equal to a squared. Then we multiply through by 4 and we get that 4a squared plus a squared equals 4a squared. Then we can subtract an a squared from each side and we get that 4a squared equals 3a squared. Next, we would like to divide each side by 4, which yields that h squared equals 3 quarters of a squared. Last but not least, we take the square root of each side. And we see that the height h is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 times a. Using the fact that we have just computed the height of our triangle, we can compute its area. So we can compute the area, and this is going to be for one triangle. And we know that the formula from geometry is one half the base times the height. We know that the base has a length of A, 
And we know that the height of the triangle, which we've just computed, is the square root of 3 over 2 times a. We can simplify this expression to yield the square root of 3 over 4 times a squared. That is the area of one of these equilateral triangles, but we realize that our rhombus has twice the area of a single triangle. So for the area of the rhombus, it's going to be twice the area of one triangle. That gives us two times the square root of three over four times a squared, or a total of the square root of 3 over 2 times a squared. Now that we have computed the area of the rhombus, we can compute the volume of the unit cell. The volume is simply the area of the rhombus times the parameter C. For osmium, the parameter A has a length of 273.43 picometers, and the parameter C has a length of 432.00 picometers. Using the techniques that we have shown in previous videos, we can convert these particular lengths first to meters and then to centimeters, and we would find that the parameter A converts to 2.7343 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters, and the parameter C would be converted to the length of 4.3 to zero, 0 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. The overall volume of the unit cell can be condensed into a single formula as the square root of 3 over 2 times a squared c. And if we do this particular computation, we get the volume of a single unit cell to be 27.971 times 10 to the minus 24 cubic centimeters. Next, we can compute the mass of a unit cell using the fact that the atomic weight of osmium is 190.2 grams per mole. So the mass of a unit cell is going to be 190.2 grams of osmium in one mole of osmium. We know that in one mole of anything, there are going to be Avogadro's number of particles, 6.2. 022 times 10 to the 23rd and then last but not least we need to know the number of atoms per unit cell we can put those in in the hexagonal closed pack cell we have one atom at each of the vertices now each of these vertices is simultaneously in eight different unit cells. Therefore, each of the vertex atoms counts as one eighth. We have eight such atoms, so that gives us one atom per unit cell. Plus, there's a second atom which is entirely inside a particular unit cell. Kind of hard to drill that there. Put that a little higher. Kind of hard to get the 3D effect here, but we kind of put it in here. 
This isn't this atom is entirely inside the unit cell. Therefore, the unit cell for the hexagonal closed pack structure has exactly two atoms. Using these data, we can cancel units. So we cancel the units of moles of osmium with moles of osmium, atoms of osmium with atoms of osmium, and we can get the overall mass of a single unit cell, which is determined to be 63.1684 times 10 to the minus 23 grams of osmium. So that is the mass of just one unit cell of osmium in the hexagonal close packed structure. We can now calculate the density of osmium using the fact that by definition the density is the mass divided by the volume. Recall that also in physics you tend to use the symbol rho, but in chemistry we use D for density. In this particular case, the mass of the unit cell is 63.1684 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. And the volume of a unit cell is 27.971 times 10 to the minus 24 cubic centimeters. Once we perform the requisite computations, we get a density of 22.58 grams per cubic centimeter. And as always, whenever we do any computation, at all ever we always need to do a reasonableness check on the result you'll recall that one of the nice features of using the units of grams per cubic centimeter as our unit is that we can always refer it to the density of water which we recall is one gram per cubic centimeter and we also have a range of reasonable values for metals on earth that the lowest densities where the alkali metals are as low as a half a gram per cubic centimeter, and that the highest densities are on the order of 22 grams per cubic centimeter. And in fact, the highest in density of a metal is osmium itself, which is 22.58 grams per cubic centimeter. So while this is at the high end of the density, this is our density limit. So we realize that this is the correct calculated density for the metal osmium.